Hello, algebra students. This is section 3.2 on solving linear systems algebraically. In the last video, we solved systems graphically. What we did is we graphed an equation, and then we graphed another equation, and we found their intersection point. What we're going to talk about today is to accomplish the same task, which is to find their intersection point, but do so algebraically. This is going to cover two different algebraic methods, one of which is called substitution and the other is called elimination. Go ahead, pause it here, write it down, and then we'll talk about this. Uh, solving a system of equations by substitution, uh, here's the steps for it. Uh, step one is to solve for one variable. There will be actually four variables, two x's and two y's. Remember, there are two different equations. And you are going to solve for one of those variables. Once you have done that, you are going to substitute the expression that the variable you solve for is equal to. I'll show you what that looks like. But you're going to substitute something into the other equation, the equation you did not solve for. And in doing so, something kind of crazy happens uh, where one of the variables is no longer present. It's just either just x or just y, and you're able to solve for it. That's what the substitution method uh, would entail. The elimination method is going to entail multiplying one or potentially even both equations by a constant. Remember, constants are just numbers. So by a constant to make each equation have the same coefficient with opposite sign. I know that's kind of a lot, but I think it'll make sense once we look at an example. Once you do that, you're going to add the equations, and this is going to allow you to solve for x and y. I will say that generally, those first time students hear both of these methods, they prefer substitution. Uh, and then as you do more problems, you probably will end up doing elimination more. Now, the reason why we need both methods is that sometimes equations are really simple to do substitution. And sometimes equations are really simple to do elimination. And what I want is you guys to be able to think through which one is easier, which one's more likely to be accurate. Uh, which one will avoid things like fractions and, and you know difficult scenarios um, by picking the right method. First, let's look at a, a substitution example. Uh, substitution says step one is to solve for one variable. Well, three of the variables have numbers in front of them, and one of them doesn't. This is going to be much easier to solve for. If I want to get this x by itself, all I have to do is subtract this three y on both sides, and I get x is equal to, those cancel, 3 minus 3y. That's step one. Step one is pretty easy. Step two, I know x in this and 3 minus 3y are the same, right? They're equal to one another. In the other equation, the equation I haven't touched yet, instead of putting x there, I'm going to put the thing that x is equal to, which we just said is 3 minus 3y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, like a substitute teacher, right? It's in place of. I'm going to substitute 3 minus 3y in place of that x. When I do so, I'm going to write it out. I'm going to substitute it in with parentheses around it. So this is the sta this statement, but instead of x there, it's 3 minus 3y. Now, something kind of crazy happened where I no longer have an x variable. The only variable I have is y. And when I only have one variable, I'm easily able to solve for that one variable. I'm going to end up distributing here. 6 minus 6y plus 5y equals negative 5. I can combine the negative 6y and the 5y to make negative y. And I can subtract this 6 on both sides to get negative 11. Now divide by negative 1, and I get y is equal to 11. My answer, I don't know the x coordinate yet, but I know that the y coordinate is going to be 11. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 11 and substitute that in place of y. And I can go into this equation or this equation. It won't matter. 
I'm going to choose the bottom one because that one doesn't have the number in front of X again. So I think it's going to be a little bit easier. But a good smart person would do both of them to make sure that this X value was the same. That would be a way to check your work. It should work in both of them just the same. X plus 3 times 11. Nope. Equals 3. X plus 33 equals 3. Subtract 33 on both sides, I get X is equal to negative 30. So my, what I'm saying is the point, the solution that makes both true should be negative 30 comma 11. I'm going to, let's just say I plugged 11 into the, the first equation like I suggested. What I would end up with is 2X plus, now it would be sub, substituting 11 in there, that would be 55. Subtract the 55, 2x equals negative 60, so x is equal to negative 30. Notice I got the same answer. That uh, effectively proves that I was right in picking this as my solution. So that's substitution. What did we do? Let's just revisit it just real quick. Step one was to solve for a variable. We solved for x, right? That's what we were doing by picking this. Then we substituted what x was equal to in the other equation, and we were able to basically just solve for variables at that point. Now let's do an elimination example. With elimination, what you want to do is you want to make the x's have the same number. Right now, the x is 1x is 3 and 1 is 6. Or the y's have the same number. Right now, 1 is negative 7, 1, 1 is negative 8. I want them to have the same coefficient, number in front, but with opposite signs. So one I want to be positive and one I want to be negative. And I'm going to do so using multiplication. So we can either multiply one equation, like this whole top equation, or this whole bottom equation, or it might have to be both, to make either the x's the same number, one positive and one negative, or the y is the same number with one being positive and one being negative. You're going to get good at this, but the easiest thing to make match would be the x's, because if I multiplied this by 2, I would they would both be 6. Multiplying something by 7 to get to 8 is not easy. So I'm going to multiply this top one, and I don't want them to both be 6x. I want one to be negative. So I'm going to multiply this whole top equation by negative 2. What I get when I do that is negative 6x. That's the goal, 6x and negative 6x. The x's have the same coefficient, but one positive and one negative. Now this will turn into plus 14y equals negative 20. If I multiply something by negative 2, I have to do that whole equation, remember. So now that one kind of goes away, and I'm left with these two. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these equations. What's that going to do? Well, 6x and negative 6x, when I add those things, these go away. These eliminate. That's the whole point. The negative 8y and the 14y would add to 6y. And the 8 and negative 20 would add to negative 12. So y is equal to negative 2. Now at this point, I'm going to go back to the beginning. And just like in the last example, I'm going to substitute negative 2 in for y in either this equation or this equation. Or if I want to check my work, I could do both equations. 3x minus 7 times negative 2 equals 10. This is now only one x I'm solving for. I just got to get it by itself. This ends up being 3x plus 14 equals 10. Subtract 14 to both sides, I get 3x is equal to negative 4. So x is equal to negative 4 thirds. So negative 4 thirds, comma, negative 2, or I could write, have written that as negative 1.3 repeating, um, comma, negative 2. Let's say we substituted negative 2 into uh, that the bottom equation, this equation instead, and make sure that we got the right answer. That would give us 6x plus 16 
is equal to eight, right? Substituting a negative two in for that would be negative eight times negative two, which is positive 16. Six X is equal to negative eight. So X is equal to negative eight over six, which is also negative four thirds. So either way we got negative four thirds, I'm very confident then that I got the right answer. So here's our next example. When I look at this, uh, now our directions have changed. It says, says just choose a method to solve the system. I need to decide if I want to use either elimination or substitution. And this problem looks a lot easier to use substitution. Why is that? Well, elimination is nice when you have them lined up like AX plus BY equals C. And the other one is also, you know, DX plus EY equals F, okay? Where it's all lined up like this and you're gonna try to make the X's or the Y's cancel. In this problem, Y is already solved for. So this lends itself really nicely to, to substitution because I'm just gonna substitute this whole statement in place of Y. 3X, minus 10. Remember, y is the same as negative 7x minus 17. So instead of putting y there, I'm going to put negative 7x minus 17 there. So I've rewritten this top equation right here, except inside of y, I put in negative 7x minus 17. Now I only have x's, no y's. So this is something I can just solve for. 3x plus 70x plus 170 equals 24. I get 73x is equal to negative 146. Divide both sides by 73, and you get x is equal to negative 2. So my solution, remember, it's going to be negative 2 comma something. And I need to figure out what that something is. I know the x value is negative 2, but I don't know the y value yet. So I'm going to pick one of the equations, and I'm going to substitute negative 2 in for the x. y equals 14 minus 17, so y equals negative and that's my solution. There will be occasions where you need to identify uh, using the terms from the last lecture, what type of system this is. Well, it has one solution, and so we call this a consistent, independent system. Now, this one, on the other hand, looks really nicely set up for elimination. Remember, with elimination, you want either the x's to have the same number, same coefficient, but one positive, one negative, or the y's to have the same coefficient, but one positive, one negative. This is a pretty easy one to fix. I can multiply this by, hopefully you guys picked negative three. Why do we want to pick negative three? Well, if I multiply the x by negative three, that's gonna make this negative three x. Now my x's have the same coefficient, one's positive and one's negative. Negative three times negative two is positive six y, and negative three times four would be negative 12. Now that one goes away, and I am left with these two equations, and I'm going to add them together. The x's, just like we wanted to, are going to cancel, but something weird happens here because also the y's cancel here. This cancel, this cancel. We're left with essentially nothing over here. Nothing is equal to negative four. Notice, I don't have an X anymore. I don't have a Y anymore, right? They both cancel. This is an indicator to you that your, first up, your system of equations is a weird one. It's not gonna have one solution. It's either going to have infinite solutions or no solutions, one of these two things. If it is a true statement, that you're left with down here, that would be no solution. Or sorry, if it's a true statement, that would be infinite solutions. 
But if it's something like this, where zero is not equal to negative four, that tells you it's no solution. And remember, the term that we have for no solutions is inconsistent. So this can happen regardless of whether you're using elimination or substitution. You're gonna go and try to eliminate a variable like x, but when doing so, you also eliminated the y variable. Then you have to evaluate the truth of your statement. This statement is not true, so it's no solution and inconsistent. This will be our last example. Uh, this problem would not be a fun one to do substitution at all because none of the variables are easy to solve for. Instead, I'm going to use elimination, and it's also not that great of an elimination problem to solve for, but it is a lot easier than substitution. What I have to think about is making the x's the same number or the y's the same number, one positive and one negative. And when you guys are thinking about this, there isn't anything that you can multiply 4 easily by to get to negative 14 or 10 easily by to get to 35. So neither of the variables are easy to solve for. Therefore, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both equations by something. And we're going to be so strategic about this. Um, what we can ask ourselves is like this 10 one and 35 isn't too bad. What does 10 multiply to, right? What are its factors? Or sorry, what is its uh, multiples? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And what are the multiples of 35? And find the smallest one that they both, uh, both have as multiples. Hopefully you guys are thinking about the number 70 right now. 10 can get to 70 by multiplying it by 7. And 35 can get to 70 by multiplying it by 2. So I'm going to multiply both equations by different numbers. That's okay. When I do that, I get 28x minus 70y is equal to 56. Now I'm going to multiply the bottom equation. What I would end up with is negative 28x plus 70y is equal to negative 56. Now, this is another weird example. When I add the 20, when I add the x's, they cancel. When I add the y's, they cancel. What I'm left with is zero is equal to zero. That is a true statement. Therefore, we're going to call this system of equations uh, an infinite type, right? There are infinite solutions to this, this system of equations. And the term for that is consistent dependent. So that's what I have for you guys for section 3.2. Make sure you're doing the practice problems and checking your work. And let me know if you have any questions.